Today we'll learn about spironolactone, which is also called aldactone. This drug can be used to treat several conditions, but it is mainly used to help control high blood pressure. A lower blood pressure can reduce the risk of stroke and heart attack. Aldactone often is also used to treat fluid retention, which is also known as edema, and related conditions such as congestive heart failure. There are some interesting off-label uses for this drug as well. So let's get started. Spironolactone is a type of potassium-sparing diuretic. It is also known as a water pill, and it is sold under the brand name Aldactone. Spironolactone is a particular pharmacologic agonist of aldosterone. The word agonist or antagonist in medical terms means a substance that blocks an action, and aldosterone is a steroidal hormone which is produced by the adrenal cortex. One of the greatest benefits of using this diuretic is that it prevents the blood potassium levels from dropping too low, as it stops the body from absorbing too much salt. So it has a dual purpose of being an effective antihypertensive drug, and it also affects the treatment of edema, which might happen in nephrotic syndrome, cirrhosis of the liver, and congestive heart failure. Mechanism of action. Blood pressure depends on the level of water and salt in the bloodstream, and kidneys have the capacity to hold Hold salt and water. The adrenal cortex releases a steroid hormone or mineral corticoid known as aldosterone, which plays an important role in regulating the blood pressure. It causes the kidneys to reabsorb sodium and water and discharge potassium. This increases blood pressure, but sometimes when the mechanism becomes dysfunctional, it causes aldosterone to behave pathologically and increases the risk of kidney and cardiovascular disease, which is more serious in persons who are already at risk. Spironolactone reverses the action of aldosterone and causes the kidneys to preserve potassium while discharging sodium and water through the urine. It does so by attaching to the aldosterone receptors at the aldosterone-dependent sodium-potassium exchange site in the distal convoluted tubules of the kidney. Therefore, spironolactone is considered to be a potassium-sparing diuretic as it increases the urine output while retaining potassium. When there is lower water volume in the blood, blood pressure decreases which explains why in hypertension the level of water in the bloodstream is high. As a diuretic, spironolactone is not very effective if used alone, as it only affects the collecting tubules where a low level of sodium is retained. For better results, it can be used with other diuretics. You will see aldactone used to treat several conditions. It may be prescribed to the hypertensive patient as an antihypertensive and diuretic. It is mainly used to treat congestive heart failure and edema. That occurs in patients with cirrhosis of the liver and nephrotic syndrome. It is also used to treat hypokalemia and basic hyperaldosteronism. Other off-label uses of spironolactone include its anti-adrenergic effect, it acts as a strong agonist of the androgen receptors, preventing the formation of androgen. Certain doctors prescribe it for this property to cure a combination of conditions caused by androgens. Type of androgens include testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Some common conditions are hertzuism, which is when women grow body hair where it normally doesn't grow, acne, hyperandrogenism, such as in polycystic ovarian syndrome, causing very painful menstrual periods, sibohoria, which is in women, and adrenergic alopecia, or baldness, in men. But excessive use for men is not advisable, as the drug carries the risk of feminization. Contraindications Aldactone should not be prescribed to people who have severe renal injury. Serious renal excretory dysfunction and urea, which means that the individual cannot urinate, hyperkalemia, which means high blood potassium levels, Addison's disease, and those who are allergic to the drug. Also, pregnant women or those who are planning to get pregnant, as well as breastfeeding mothers, need to be aware that this medication is in pregnancy category C. Side effects. The drug can cause adverse reactions. Here are some of them. Frequent urination stomach cramps, headache, drowsiness, nausea, and vomiting. 
Occasionally, side effects of spironolactone might be severe. They appear rarely, but if they do, instruct your patient to seek medical help immediately if any of the following serious side effects appear, as the situation can be serious or even lethal. For instance, if your patient experiences swelling of the face, mouth, lips, or tongue, itching, rash, tightness in the chest, and difficulty breathing, hyperkalemia, abnormal bleeding or bruising, black tarry stools, dark urine, irregular or missed menstruation, breast tenderness, severe or constant stomach pain, constant sore throat, muscle pain, leg cramps, yellowing of the skin or eyes, fast, slow, or irregular heartbeat, increased thirst, chills, fever, and confusion. There can be more side effects besides the above mentioned list, and you as the nurse should listen carefully to all of the symptoms that your patients describe. These symptoms should be documented and reported to the physician. Nurses should be particularly aware of spironolactone's interaction with other drugs. Certain drugs used for a long period or at a specific time may increase the risk of major side effects of spironolactone or change its effects. Interaction with ACE inhibitors or NSAIDs can lead to serious hyperkalemia. NSAIDs can also reduce its diuretic effects. Interactions with lithium can cause lithium toxicity as diuretics can also cause the kidney to discharge less lithium. Interactions with digoxin can lead to digitalis toxicity as spironolactone increases the half-life of digoxin, which raises the level of serum digoxin. With corticosteroids, it leads to electrolyte depletion, especially hypokalemia. With narcotics, alcohol, or barbiturates, it can increase the risk of orthostatic hypotension. There are more drug interactions of the medication outside of this list, but be aware of your patient's reaction and symptoms. Dosage considerations. For children, dosage is based on body weight. For adults, the recommended daily dose is 25 milligrams to 400 milligrams depending on the requirements of the treatment. The medication can be used as a single or divided dose. It can be taken with or without food. If it upsets the stomach, it should be taken with food. It is recommended to be taken early in the day or before 6 p.m. to avoid discomfort at night which can be caused by frequent urination. It is important to take aldactone exactly as prescribed. The dosage should not be increased or decreased or stopped without consulting the doctor. A sudden discontinuation of the drug can worsen the condition. If a dose is missed, it should be taken as soon as the patient remembers. If it is close to the time for the next dose, the mixed dose should be skipped and the patient should not double the dose to make up for the missed dose. Special precautions and warnings. Alert your patient to the importance of discussing his medical history and allergies with their doctor before using the medication. Aldactone increases the blood potassium level, so alert your patient to the risk of increasing or decreasing the usage of prescribed potassium supplements or foods containing high levels of potassium, like tomatoes, bananas, and potatoes, and salt substitutes. Be sure to inform your patient of the importance of letting the provider know that he is using aldactone before taking any other drugs. For other conditions, inform your patient to avoid alcohol. For safety purposes, avoid driving, using machinery, or any activity that needs alertness. Children and elderly should be given the medication with extra caution, as they may be more sensitive to the effects and side effects of the drug. Lab tests such as blood electrolyte levels, blood pressure, pressure and renal function tests should be carried out with regularity while using aldactone. Because the drug may influence lab results, the patient should always mention that he is using aldactone to the health workers while taking this test. Nurses, be sure to stress the importance of keeping follow-up appointments with his or her doctors and educate them on the need for a regular lab test. In summary, aldactone has proven to be effective therapy for many persons. As your patient's nurse, always be alert to what your your patient is telling you and always take the opportunity to educate your patient about the drugs that you are administering to them and always listen to their comments referring to the drug's effects and side effects. Always document appropriately the information as necessary. You are your patient's educator and best advocate. Stay tuned guys because in the next coming days we're going to be going over a nursing exam or NCLEX style questions related to this medication. See you in a bit!